What's up, everybody? Um, I just got a bunch of stuff here, so I thought I'd do a little 5.8 gigahertz uh, info video just to get some information out there that I've been learning the hard way. Uh, but first, you know, why would you go 5.8 uh, when there's some other frequencies that give a lot, have a lot more potential to them? Uh, there's a couple reasons. One is size. Um, you can see this. Uh, this is a clover leaf antenna, or uh, I've also got um, a skew planer wheel, and they're tiny. They're the size of a quarter. You can put them anywhere. You can put them inside your plane. You can uh, stick them out the wing. They won't cause any drag. They're just, you know, useful. The small size adds to uh, dur durability. This one's been crashed about a hundred times. Um, I've, it used to be this long, uh, but I've just had to shorten the coax because the coax is the most fragile part of the antenna. Um, the actual element's fine. Uh, SMA adapter's fine. You just have to keep solder or uh, shortening that coax. Um, and then, you know, the helicals. This is a 5.8 gigahertz, 8-turn helical. This is a big, badass antenna. And you compare that to a 1.3 gigahertz antenna, well, <laughs> move over. Make some room for it, because you're going to need it. There's a size comparison for you. That's a 1.3 gigahertz helical next to a 5.8 gigahertz helical. So, you know, if you got uh, some problems with your ground station, you need size or... If you want to make a small portable one, um, a small portable FPV system you can take with you anywhere. Uh, 5.8 gigahertz is great just because of the size. Um, there's a couple other advantages. One is 5.8 isn't used a lot for much really, so there's not a lot of interference. You can go pretty much anywhere and expect the same performance, which is a big deal because you know you don't have to worry about cell phones, you don't have to worry about Wi-Fi. You don't have to worry about digital TV, all these things that affect other frequencies. You know, 5.8 gigahertz doesn't. And on top of that, even the stuff that does use 5.8, uh, this it doesn't penetrate. So if it's inside a house, a 5.8 phone or something, it's not going to leave the walls, and uh, it's it's not going to interfere with your plane. Another advantage is, since it's so underused. Um, you can get away with flying 5.8 without a ham license. That's why I started, just because I didn't have my ham yet, and I was uh, kind of concerned about whether I was going to stick with FPV or not, uh, concerned about getting fined by the FCC, all this stuff. But 5.8, you know, I'm over the limit. It's 200 milliwatts. Uh, anything less than that's kind of useless. Um, but it's just it's so underused. You're not going to interfere with anybody. You're not going to interfere with any other hams. So they're not going to be looking for you. All right. So another uh, great thing about these 5.8 transmitters is the channels. Um, they say they've got a full eight channels on them. Uh, I've successfully flown uh, with two other. I think it was two other 5.8 guys in the air at the same time. Um, we just flipped around sounds and channels that were separated enough, and we didn't have any trouble. Um, the time before that, I flew. You got to be careful because I flew with a friend and. Uh, we were swapping um, channels. We thought we found some that were different, but as soon as we flew out, we realized um, there must have been some harmonics or something because every time he flew past my ground station, I'd get a flash of his picture. Every time he flew by mine, you know, he'd get interference in his. So you just got to uh, do some testing, some range testing. Um, that's what ended up with this. We were on the wrong channels. I threw my thing. He was already flying, or he was powered up on the ground. I threw it. Uh, got about 100 feet away and in my stupidity I just kept going instead of taking my goggles off uh, pictures just went black and I crashed so you gotta check make sure um, do some range tests test to make sure that the channels work with each other uh, but that's it's really cool um, when you do find some channels that work together you can get a couple guys up there uh, probably you could probably get four or five clean channels we only had trouble with I think it was six and four um, that's what the other guy was telling me uh, he seemed to know a lot more about these channel selections than I do, so who knows. Um, there are disadvantages. Uh, first of all, it doesn't penetrate as well as, uh, you know, the other lower frequencies. Um, it gets blocked by trees, it, get, it gets blocked by houses, it gets blocked by all sorts of things that we like to fly behind. Uh, but that can be remedied, um, you know, with this eight-turn helical here. Um, Waka here on the forum actually flew this exact antenna out uh, I think it was eight kilometers 
So the performance is there. Um, you know, I've taken this myself out uh, a couple miles and I've ducked down uh, below trees, uh, dodging trees back and forth. And with a higher gain antenna, you gain a lot of performance on 5.8. Um, it's just, you need a high gain antenna in my opinion. Uh, when I started out, I flew with um, just the, the set of blue beams here, um, just Omni antennas, but I, you know, I, I just use one on the plane and then I use the other one on another plane and I use a helical on the ground. Uh, I, I didn't get very good performance out of the Omnis on 5.8. Um, the directional is just way better in my opinion. Um, so a lot of guys complaining that they can't fly behind stuff, it's probably because they're on Omnis. Uh, and they just don't have the gain, they don't have the, the uh, I don't know, power or whatever to pick up the signal when it degrades like that. Um, but the helical does. I used to fly with a 5 turn and right now I'm using an antenna tracker so the 8 turn is uh, brilliant on the tracker. But if you don't have a tracker, a 5 turn is really good. Um, a lot of guys worry about directional antennas whether it's going to be uh, it's going to be um, too narrow of a beam, or you're not going to be able to fly around yourself and stuff. But that's it's mostly un, un, unfounded. You can fly at the beam they say on a five turn is 60 degrees wide, but you can go past that. You can go pretty much 180 degrees in front of the helical uh, at you know at good distance. Um, like if you're flying around a park or something, you can pretty much point that at the middle of the park and fly anywhere you want. Uh, up to about a kilometer out, it get, starts getting more directional. You need to point it towards the aircraft, but you still don't have to point it straight at it. Um, I've flown uh, with a five-turn helical. I flew out two and a half miles, and I still had great video. I had to turn back uh, because that's the limit so far of my 72 megahertz um, transmitter. But uh, but the 5.8 it was still great. I still had a great picture. Uh, not a lot of snow in the image yet, and you know still 3D capable. I could spin it. I could do flips upside down. Everything because of the circular polarization. Uh, so that's just a few things I've learned on antennas. Um, there's a couple different VTXs or transmitters out there. There's the good old fashioned Foxtech 200 milliwatt. Now this sucker is big and heavy. It's about 25 grams, but that's still pretty light compared to most VTXs out there. Um, I like these things because they're really strong, really robust. I've crashed this one tons of times. <laughs> that's why this is hardwired now. Um, they don't need this heat sink. You can pop that off um, and save some weight there. Uh, but these things are pretty good. They have a built-in microphone, which is cool. They have built-in filters, which is cool. I've ran this directly off the flight battery uh, with no LC filters or anything, and I didn't have any uh, interference from the electronics on the plane in my image. It was still, uh, you know, just as good as it would be if I had an LC filter because it's got one built in. Uh, so that's a really, really good advantage to these. Um, now these are, you know, cheap Chinese crap as you'll see people say um, they have these little dip switches um, which you know I don't know if you can see those but who, who knows what the hell they mean I just flip them back and forth I probably flipped them a hundred times before I found a channel that worked with my receiver um, the little RC 305 here it's got these channels written on it I don't know they don't match up with what the hell it says on here they don't match up with what it says on here I don't know what they're for I know they have three different bands so maybe they just didn't change the sticker for the different bands. But anyway, so that's the Fox Tech. These things are strong as hell. This one I crashed straight into the dirt, you know, 50, 60 miles an hour, just total uh, moron mistake. Uh, didn't do a range check and threw it while my buddy was on 5.8. Um, the thing, I snapped off the SMA connector and I snapped off uh, the power wires and kind of like that, but the plugs were okay. But this thing still works. <laughs> I soldered, you can see I, I soldered this back together back onto the case. Um, I popped off the top here, inspected it for damage. There wasn't any, just the center pin was uh, broken, so I soldered that back on, and this sucker still works. Um, these things are incredibly tough. So if you crash a lot, uh, if you think you're going to crash a lot, these are good investment. Um, the prices went up on these things, but I think you can still find them like 50 or $60 a few different places, um, but 
the usual places bumped up their prices all up to like seventy nine dollars or something like that. So you've got to go to those crazy Chinese websites to get the good deals. Um, but they're worth it, in my opinion. Um, now, here is one that I found. This is made by, uh, I forget their name, CNG or something like that. And they're in Europe. Um, and I have two of these things. Now, let me just explain first. This is the module, uh, 200 milliwatt, 5.8 gigahertz. This is the full power, same power as the Foxtech, but look at the size. This thing's like 8 grams. Um, I got this off a dude on eBay. He sells these in the States. He uh, put these plugs pre-soldered on here, and he pre-soldered this SMA adapter, which, you know, that might work for some people, but these solder pads on here are super freaking uh, uh, fragile. If you even blow on this thing, they'll snap right off and it'll be ruined because you can't make a solder connection on those pins again. Um, so that's one reason why I've been trying to move away from these things. But you can get these things for like $30, like $25 or something, and you just got to solder them yourself. But it's a full 200 milliwatt power. I've gone out uh, about a mile on these just because I put these on my little foam scratch build planes. Um, they don't, they're basically $2 airframe. So, you know, I want something cheap on there because I fly it like it's cheap. But they're nice and lightweight too, which is great when your plane only weighs 500 grams or, you know, less than that. So you can get a setup like this, full 200 milliwatts that with the eight turn helical, you know, this will go the same two and a half miles uh, or eight kilometers that Wacka here went because it's identical, um, the identical uh, transmitter to this one. It's just this one's got a regulator, this one's got filters, this one's got a heat sink and all sorts of other stuff. Um, this one is just the transmitter module. So you have to be very careful about getting clean power to these things. You, if you're doing a single battery setup, you would need to do an LC filter. Um, you need to get clean power there somehow because these are very sensitive to uh, electronic interference. Um, what else can I say about these things? Uh, well, here, this is the new one. Okay, so you can see these are the same transmitter. This is actually the same module soldered onto this board. Uh, I got one of these on eBay, another one I got from a website. If you search uh, like 5.8 gigahertz, 200 milliwatt VTX, uh, if you look hard enough, you'll find these. Um, this is the same 8 grams as this whole rig over here, but this one has an SMA adapter already on it, which means you can just pop your blue beam straight on there. It's the right, it's not RP SMA, it's SMA, so you can just put that straight on there, that's awesome. It's got these dip switches because the channel selection on here, I don't know if you can see this, but over here um, it's got these channels and you have to you know, connect these pins and all sorts of crazy orders to get to whatever channel you want. Uh, whereas with this one you just flip these switches uh, to the right thing. Again, you're just going to have to keep flipping them until it pops up on your receiver because who knows what the hell. But anyway, another thing I like is it has these holes for soldering. So you just pop the wire in there, solder it, Boom, that is probably the best connection you can get is one where you can put the wire into the uh, through the hole and solder all the way, both sides, 360 degrees. Um, you can yank on that thing and it's not going to break it. It's not going to pop off the stupid solder pads like on here. Uh, so that's great. I love this thing. Um, one thing I noticed is it only has one audio channel. Uh, this one's supposed to have two audio channels. I haven't gotten it to work. I tried to do um, have the microphone and the telemetry to my tracker, and I wasn't able to do that. So I'm not sure if it is stereo or if they just say it's stereo, or maybe it is. It's just doesn't have bandwidth, the same bandwidth or something. I don't know. I'm I don't know a lot about it, but uh, I do know that um, the audio works fine on here. If you just have a microphone you want to set up or tracking telemetry, uh, it works great. Um, this thing doesn't put off power. Uh, I should have mentioned this thing puts off a good clean 12 volts. It's actually half a volt less than the input. And uh, they also say that these can work on 4S. The regulator will take a 4S battery. So you can pop that voltage up um, and the regulator will regulate it down. Um, or actually, I should say the camera voltage is half a volt less than whatever you're putting into it. So if you put 4S into it, you're going to get 4S minus half a volt out. So just be wary of that. Um, but it does have camera power out, which is cool. This one does not have camera power out, 
um, and this thing runs off 5 volts. Right now in my P51 Mustang, I have this set up to run off the receiver. I just uh, soldered up a, um, a simple servo connector to it, just plugged it into my receiver, and it works great. There's no interference. This thing has built-in filters as well. So I'm running this off straight off the receiver. Uh, no servo noise, no motor noise in the image. It's just clean, uh, clean, great image. It's got two built-in filters, I think. Um, so this is great. I just run the camera power off the uh, 3S balance tap with an LC filter on the camera because you need to make sure you put an LC filter on the camera. Um, but this is a good thing. So keep an eye out for these. I think the guy who makes these is on uh, RC groups. Um, I don't know if it's Marcus or if it's uh, Renatoa or one of those those guys. They're in uh, Switzerland, I think, uh, Europe somewhere. They make these things, design them, sell them. Um, this thing was about $70, I think, uh, $70, $80, and it's badass. I love it. It's tiny. It works great. It's full 200 milliwatt, um, clean image. Uh, it's got, you know, full same power as this, just smaller. So if you're looking to look at those things, if you're interested. Um, now these receivers, these things are crap. <laughs> I've got three of these things. One of them broke uh, while I was using it. I just noticed it started to degrade. I couldn't fly as far as I used to. Another one um, dropped, and that was the end of it. You know, simple drop onto the ground, and it was done. Um, so get a couple of those. Uh, they, they, I think they ask about twenty dollars for them. Um, I know ready-made RC was liquidating a bunch for like ten dollars, uh, but they're cheap. So anytime you can buy them, buy one um, because you might you might end up needing it. But other than that, this thing is pretty good. You know, I flew when I was first starting. I had one of these things with just a little uh, quarter-wave antenna on a little uh, blade helicopter and just stupid rubber ducky. Yeah. By the way, just throw this thing away. It's totally useless. But I had this on there. And I was flying with a little quarter wave on the transmitter, and I, I could still go a kilometer. Um, I still had pretty decent picture uh, with just the crappiest antennas in the world. So once you get some blue beams on here, the performance really, really jumps up. Um, so let me see if I can think of a couple other things to talk about. Um, oh yeah, here is the 5.8 gigahertz wireless DVR. Um, you may have seen this thing advertised a few places. Um, it's got a built-in 5.8 gigahertz um, receiver and it'll put you know AV in, AV out so you can uh, use it to, I don't know, I don't know why you'd use AV out, but um, you can use it for all sorts of things. It's got, uh, you can change the channels on it. Uh, this is how I figure out what the hell channel I'm on. I just flip through here until uh, it, the image comes up and then I know, okay, I'm on channel 5 you know, channel 5 on here, <laughs> whatever the hell that means. So um, I wouldn't actually recommend these because uh, you may see in a couple of my videos when I'm flying in the, uh, in the trains moving fast camera or there's a lot of movement happening on the screen, uh, this thing really sucks. It starts dropping frames. Uh, it doesn't, it starts, you know, skipping and just really sucks if you're trying to make cool footage. But as, you know, backup, as just having something in case you crash, you know, where the hell was I when I crashed. This is good because it records full um, full quality. Now, the quality is not that great, but it, it'll record it and it'll record through static and it'll never shut up, shut off. I have recorded for like an hour straight on this thing, um, just never turned it off and it seemed to work great. Um, so yeah, this thing is, I don't know, it's about $100. I don't think it's worth that. Uh, I haven't seen anything about it, so this is the first thing you've heard about it. Good, because I, you know, I wish somebody told me that it dropped frames like that. Um, so anyway, that's um, that's what I got for 5.8 gigahertz. Uh, 